Namaste, everyone, and welcome to Anchor the Light Meditation. So, it's Wednesday, and we want to continue with our practice. Before we start, let's ask for divine blessing, shall we? To the divine Supreme God, divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, personally to my teacher, Master Chakok Sui Mahaguji Meiling, we thank you for divine light, divine love, thank you for your guidance, help, healing, and protection. We thank you in full faith. So it is. Okay, so let me just make sure everybody's online here. Mm -hmm. Supposed to be. I'm still waiting for the image to show up. Okay. All right, first of all, before we continue, on Thursday, which is tomorrow night, California time, and some people go, it's short notice. Well, yeah, kind of, sorry. <laughs> so tomorrow is, uh, we're having a full moon meditation. It's going to be 6 p.m. California time. The peak of the full moon is 6.30 p.m. So you guys do the conversion. So you heard the, you heard the saying uh, by Lao Tzu, when the teacher, uh, when a student is ready, the student, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When the student is really ready, the teacher disappears. So we'll go through that tomorrow in detail. Uh, of course, Thursday we honor my spiritual teacher, Grandmaster Twakok Sui. His birthday is August 15, which is next Monday. And so the full moon, I'm going to talk a little bit about, number one, how to prepare yourself so you attract the appropriate spiritual teacher. Okay, The spiritual teacher that's, um, let's just say, same vibes as you to make it everyday language. And then once you attract the right teacher, what to do when you already have the spiritual teacher to, ma to maximize your time with them. And then at some point when the teacher is not physically with you, how do you continue increasing your light and continue your spiritual practice? So we'll cover that tomorrow in depth tomorrow in the full moon meditation lecture, and then we'll do intense meditation. Okay. Now, so for this morning, we'll do our meditation. As always, we'll do our meditation to enhance, to activate the heart, the crown, bring down lots of spiritual energy. And I just want to just spend a minute or so to just emphasize the importance of having a routine. A routine is basically a ritual, something you do that works, and you do it over and over and over again. Okay? So you have, like if you're a Roman Catholic, you have the Mass. Mass is basically a set of rituals put together. You know, step one, do this, step two, you know, you say this, the priests say that, and you have certain, the sacraments are, it's basically the same method repeated over and over again. In India, you call it a puja. A puja is, a, they're doing a Lakshmi puja for prosperity. So there's a set of steps that they do to produce a certain result. And if you watch movies like Harry Potter, they, they call that uh, ceremonial magic. You know, they wear a certain outfit, they wear a certain thing on their head, they have a wand, they move it clockwise, kind of clockwise, whatever. It's a ritual. When you go to work, you have a set of rituals that you do. A lot of you, you know, go to work, get your coffee, you have your meeting, and then you have your set of tasks. Everything in the world has a certain ritual. In pranic healing, when somebody comes in for healing, so let's say they have a respiratory ailment, uh, based on the, what do you call this, uh, research done by my teacher, Grandmaster Chokok Si, over the years, he goes, oh, respiratory problem, these are the chakras that are affected, uh, these are the steps that you take to purify, clean it out, clean the blockage out, this is how you energize, these are the chakras you do first, then second one, third one, we call it protocol, right? You go to a doctor, you go to a psychiatrist, psychologist, same thing, there's a certain ritual, there's, that everybody do. So the idea here is in the teaching of the seven rays, the seven tendencies, which we'll cover that another time, that's called the ray of organization or ritual. Now, why is ritual important? Ritual gives you a structure to follow. Now you go, well, you know, I'm the kind of person who would flow with life. Even though you're a person who flows with everything, there's also certain things that you follow to produce a certain result. You cannot be like, Okay, today I feel like working, tomorrow I don't feel like it. Yeah, you're independently wealthy, you go for it. Same thing with food. Okay, you don't say, well, I'll just kind of eat when I feel like it. Maybe yes, maybe no, but your body's used to a certain ritual. You say, well, I'll just sleep when the body feels like sleeping. Uh, okay, well, what if you watch TV all the night long and surf useless 
website till three or four o'clock in the morning, but you have to get to work at seven. Then you're totally screwed. <laughs> get the idea? So I'm sharing this with you because a lot of people on the spiritual path think that just because you're in the spiritual path, you can do whatever you like. It doesn't work that way. What it is, there's a certain structure that is in your physical life, your emotional life, your mental life, and your spiritual life. If you understand those structures, then you can say, okay, let me arrange my thoughts, my emotions, my actions to follow these rituals. It's just like meditation. Why is it that we first bless from the heart? There's a purpose. We bless from the crown. We have a purpose. We visualize a point of light or a flame of light. There's a purpose. So as you follow the syntax, as Tony Robbins likes to call it, it's in a certain order, you produce a certain result. Make sense? And I'm sharing that with you. That way you know, okay, there's certain rituals, there's certain structures. Then you go, okay, I will follow it. But as I follow it, I will do my best so that it resonates with the kind of person I am. So I'm going to meditate, but I'll do it in such a way that uh, get up in the morning, I'll do my physical exercises. That, that way when I get to the meditation, I'm ready. So you still have the structure, but when you get to the meditation, you're preparing yourself to really let go and flow with it. Make sense? So I hope that helps because that's one of the things that people always say, well, you know, I don't like structure. I like to flow with stuff. Go live in the desert. <laughs> you say, I'm going to flow with, I'm just going to flow with whatever. Uh, good luck with that. Try telling your boss that, oh, I don't feel like working today. Yeah, you, you'll definitely have flow. You'll flow out of the door. You tell your husband, your wife, you go, well, you know, I today I don't feel like loving you. I just feel like flowing and uh, whatever. Yeah, good luck with that. Or your children. Let's say you're the, ones, uh, you're the one providing food for them and everything. You go, well, today I don't feel like it. Go feed yourself. It doesn't work that way. There's a certain structure, and you look at the structure, and you allow yourself to work with a structure, and still enjoy it. That's it. So when you do our meditation, that's exactly what we're doing. We're doing meditation to hearts. There's a certain structure. You bless the earth. Okay? You bless the earth to allow to clean your aura and your chakras. That's the purpose of the blessing. Most of you probably don't know about it. As you allow yourself to be a channel to bless the earth, to meditation to hearts of great invocation, that energy flows through you to bless the earth. And as a Side benefit to it, as you allow yourself to be a channel to bless the earth, just like you have a pipe, you run, you know, high volume, high pressure water, water goes through, but it also cleanses the pipe. You're the pipe. So I know some of you saying, yeah, that's when I first started, go, this meditation man, it takes too long, bless the earth. Okay, the earth is blessed already. Why do they take 10, 10, 15 minutes just blessing the earth? That's the part that cleans you. Not to mention, it generates good karma. Activate your heart. So that's where you go through that part of the ritual. Once your aura and chakras are clean, remember we had you visualize a point of light and you chant Om? Well, the question is, how come is that light outside your head, not, not on your head? It's very simple. Because you're not the body. You're the spiritual self occupying the body. So when you do your meditation and put your attention outside your body, it allows you to have an expansion, to have a realization that, hey, I can put my attention outside my body, so therefore I must not be the body. That's it. Now, if you started with that first, visualize a point of light in your, on top of your head, chant Om, it's not going to work. You know why? Because if you don't clean the aura and the chakras first, even though you're putting attention there, you can't, your mind get distracted with the clouds and thoughts of, Emotions that we have every day. The blessing part cleanses the aura. So the, the syntax or the order is critical. Make sense? That's one of the reasons why people cannot experience stillness. The aura is filled with clouds of thoughts and emotions. So when you when we're doing the blessing, you're kind of just ignoring it until you get to the home. Well, good luck with you. You're going to need it. I don't do anything without a purpose. That's what I learned from my teacher. Every step of a purpose. If you've ever attended class with me, there's no fillers. We stuff your brain with so much information, you feel like it's going to explode. Because everything has a purpose. Everything has a place. Every, every structure has a purpose. That's that. 
And the beautiful thing about this is, based on the feedback you guys gave me, for last, I don't know, I lost count already. It started, what, 2020, March? <clears throat> You've been joining me for these Anchor Light meditations and plus the other meditations. Um, the feedback we got is you have more inner peace, you have better control over your thoughts, your emotions, and you're more in control of your life. That's exactly the point. The ritual of doing this day in, day out, six times a week. <laughs> you're probably so tired of me already. But you see, as you do that, the structure, the syntax, causes transformation within you. That's why people tell me, oh, I just do things when I feel like it. Yeah, that's why your life is a mess. And it's like, that's too harsh. Well, think about it. You look at every person that's successful. They have a ritual. They have a ritual. Everything from Bill Gates to, what's his name? Um, Steve Jobs to all of them, they have a certain, they have their quirks. You always hear that, right? They have their quirks. They have this strange ritual that when they get up, they have to do this first. That's what makes them powerful. They have a certain routine. So, that's that. I hope that helps. Okay? So what we'll do, we'll do our meditation now. Uh, that's why you're here, not to listen to me yak all day long. Shall we? <clears throat> to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, to my teacher, Master Tohoksui, Mahaguji Meiling, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying light and soothing, healing energy. We thank you in full faith. So be it. All right, just to kind of, for the ones who need it summarized, it's simple as this. Pick something that works and do it again and again and again. That's it. Pick something that works. Repeat, you know, rinse and repeat as they call it. That's how you become successful. You don't need a thousand different techniques. You just pick one, two, maybe three the most and just repeat it over and over and over again. You will outperform and outlast somebody who's trying to search for a thousand different Next best thing thingy. Simple. Shall we? Take your left hand, tap the center of your chest, tap your right, take your right hand, tap your crown. Okay, let's affirm divine, divine oneness and connection first. Focus on your crown. I am that. I'm not this body, I'm not these any of the my any of these emotions, I'm not any of these thoughts. I am the soul. I am the soul, the occupant of this body. The feeler of the feelings, think of these thoughts. I am that. The soul, the spiritual self. I'm a spiritual being of divine intelligence to regulate my minds and my thoughts, my mind and my thoughts. A spiritual being of divine love to regulate my feelings and emotions. A spiritual being of divine power and will to regulate the actions and movements of this body. I am that the soul, the spiritual self. Be still. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one with the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I'm one with God. I'm one with all. There is only oneness. Just be still. Maintain your stillness. Maintain your state of oneness. Open your hands in blessing. Be aware of your heart, your hands. Just say our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Visualize the earth filled with beautiful, beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. May my soul, my entire being, be filled with peace and with love. And let me share it with every person, every being on earth now. So be it. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. 
Let's just recall people we know going through challenging and difficult times in their life. Visualize their lives turning around, getting better and better, their health improving, their finances improving, their relationships improving. Bless them with hope and with faith and a better life. So be it. For there's darkness, let me sow light. Darkness is the ignorance of one's true nature, which is a being of light. May all be blessed with divine light and spiritual awakening. So be it. And with their sadness, let me sow a tremendous amount of joy. Just be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill the earth with even brighter pinker light, pink light. Pinker, that works too. May all be blessed with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and lots of joy. So be it. Be still. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. Imagine the golden light from your crown flowing down through your hands and filling the entire earth. They say our souls are one, our spirits are one. From the center of the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. May my soul be filled with love and kindness. Let me share it with every person, every being in the entire earth. So be it. From the heart of God, may all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. So be it. Just be still and let the blessings flow through us. Share it with your family, the people you work with. Let it spread to the city you live in, the state, the country. Let it sh- spread throughout the entire world. Now be aware of your heart and your crown at the same time. Take a deep breath. Exhale. And imagine golden light even brighter than before flowing through your hands and flooding your home, your workplace, your country, that it fill the entire earth. From the center of the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let every sentient being in every dimension and every direction, above and below, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all beings be blessed with inner peace, inner healing. May all be blessed with understanding, harmony, with will, and the willingness to do good. May all be blessed without exception. So be it, so be it, and so it is. Now just be still, keep your tongue in your palate, just allow the blessings to keep flowing through you. Simultaneously, it's purifying your thoughts, your emotions, and your energy bodies. Blessings be to all. So be it. Now gently put your hands down. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Imagine a beautiful golden flame just floating above your head. Just look at that golden flame. Be still. Be aware of your heart. Send a stream of love from your heart up to the crown and into that golden flame. (sighs) And stay there. Just be still. We'll add some extra energy for you. Be still.
and listen. Om Your awareness is now completely in that beautiful golden flame. Stay there. And listen within the flame. Om. You are that flame. Om. Be still. Be aware of your true nature. And being a brilliant light. Radiant light. Be still. Acknowledge your true nature. And just simply let go. And let things happen on its own. Let things be. Now. Go deeper into the light. Gently, slowly, come back to your body. Gently move your fingers, move your toes. That helps you come back. You know, your hands, your fingers or toes are the furthest away from your crown. So as you move them, it allows your soul to come in and occupy the body more. All right, raise your hands. Let's release the excess energies our bodies cannot absorb. So visualize the earth in front of you. Fill the earth with beautiful golden light, especially the people you love, your family, friends, whoever they are. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and with spirituality. So be it. Now, be aware of your feet and the base of your spine. Project golden light downwards. Fill the earth below you with golden light. And repeat after me. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. 
blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it, so be it, so it is. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. Personally, to my beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Tohok Sui Mahagu Jumeling. Thank you. In full faith, so be it. Okay, you can slowly open your eyes. All right, just give me some feedback. I hope you had a good meditation. Uh, if you're sensitive, you might have noticed the energy was different. You know, it's hard to adjust the quality and the intensity of the energy. And the secret of that is in the stillness, in the silence. In that stillness and silence, you are recognizing who you are, the spiritual yourself. Okay? So at that time, you, the soul, are the most receptive to the spiritual light. I have nothing against music and all that stuff that, you know, people have apps that they use. That's good. That's great. But at some point, you have to dismantle everything. And what's left is the eye. That's true meditation. Everything else is a step towards it. That's that. Now, the next thing is, you know, I'll just add this in as a bonus. People say, oh yeah, that's great and wonderful. How about my physical body? I want to be younger. I want to look healthier. I want to be more vibrant. Well, guess what? Simple, crazy secret. People don't think about this. They think it's separate. The secret is to do specific exercises after intense meditation. Now, the question is why? When you do meditation, you're experiencing your true self, the I, the spiritual self, the energy, right? The spiritual energy. So when you say, I'm the body, I'm not the body, I'm not the emotion, not the thoughts, I'm the soul, the I am is actually what gives the body life. That's why the soul in Italian is called anima, what animates. Guess what? When that animating factor leaves the body, the body's dead. <laughs> Get the idea? However, the opposite is true. The more that spiritual energy is able to penetrate the body and stay in the body, the longer the body lives. So for the people who say, oh, spirituality, the physical body is not important. Mm -hmm. You're right. That's why some people, the more they meditate, you go, they fall over. But what if there's a way to take that life-giving force and stuff it into your cells so that each cell is a vibrant living being. So the secret, at least part of it I can share here, is do your exercises after, before is to prepare, after meditation. After meditation, if you do the proper exercise, which is ex for now just exercising, it allows you to capture that spiritual energy, which is very, very intangible. As you do the exercise, it forces it into the cells. What good is all this intention, good energy, if your body dies early? How many people are going to help? Exactly. Right? So I hope that helps, that little tidbit. And um, you've heard me. It's not the first time you heard me. We talked about this for years. You do your exercises before to prepare the body. You do your intense meditation. After meditation, you do your exercises. To do what? Assimilate. First, doing it before is preparation. After is assimilation. Okay, so we will see you in 7 hours and 22 minutes for Anchor Like Part 2 tonight, and we'll talk about Rumi. Rumi is the great uh, Persian scholar with a lot of great teachings, short one-liners, and he's a mystic. And since he's a mystic, the teachings are very love-oriented. So we'll cover that tonight. Okay, and remember tomorrow, let me just point this out again to Tomorrow, uh, six at least California is six p.m. So I guess uh, the rest of the world afterwards would be like what is that? Friday already. Full moon meditation. It's going to be an intense one. Well, I don't do anything half-assed, so everything's intense. It's just m intenser. <laughs> we we'll just make up some word. Namaste, everyone. Y'all take care, and we will see you. 
in seven hours and 